Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And if you notice from the title below, yes, we are gonna be checking out Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi. And this is not the IoT version. So let's get started. So before we begin, I wanna thank everybody on the Andre's UEFI build. Now there's a discussion going on over there. At the time of making this video, we have about 500 comments going on. And everybody there has contributed somehow or some way or another to this project and making this possible. Now the guy who started this thread by the name of Dave, so he made a complete install of Windows 10 onto a Raspberry Pi from where to download the image all the way to getting it booted. So I will leave a link in the description below to that video and at the end where we have the channels and stuff, I will leave more links over there to his channel and everything else. He also did a very good job. I watched the video before it got released. Um, he nailed basically every point on how to get this going. So now let's check out Windows on Raspberry Pi. All right, so from boot up all the way until the desktop takes about 14 minutes or so. Yes, it's not a really fast operating system. That's due to the fact that we don't have the burst drivers, you could say, with the SD card. So it's reading at a slower pace. And until we solve a lot of these hurdles that we get, uh, especially with the USB and Wi-Fi, we're going to be running into these issues. So right now, the only two things that we do have working is the SD card driver so we could actually run the operating system and USB driver so we could use a keyboard and mouse and stuff. But we don't have the network drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, none of that is working, sound card drivers, nothing. So ultimately, like I said, this is more... It's, it's a work in progress. It's definitely a proof of concept that it does work. Now, as far as my desktop goes, uh, you could see that I have uh, the quad core working thanks to UEFI. It's 1.2 gigahertz is a Raspberry Pi B, not the B plus, and drivers don't work with the B plus, so we're stuck with the B for now. Uh, you can see the RAM and it is using um, ARM version 8. Now what's great about this operating system is that not only can it run its own normal ARM type of code. So if I pull up say explore here and I'm gonna pull up, let's see, let's go to C drive, Windows, and as of right now the start menu doesn't work. So I don't know what I need to do to get around that. I think I have to enable like a bunch of services and then I'm not really too sure yet, but if I was to open Notepad, you see how quickly that opens up. And yeah, it does work like it's supposed to. And this is the ARM version. As I was saying, what's great about this operating system, one thing that they have added or implemented is Windows on Windows. I've talked about this before on my previous videos. What Windows and Windows is, it's basically an x86 emulator for Windows. So I could ultimately run 32-bit applications and I have tested it and it definitely works. And you're gonna see here, I'm installing Microsoft Office. And unfortunately, I only have Microsoft Office 2010 at 32 bit. All the other ones I have are 64 bit, so it won't work. But yeah, the installation process for me took about half an hour or so, or maybe 40 minutes. But you could see in the end, it works. I'm gonna start up Excel right now. This is a 32 bit application. Uh, where, and it, it loads, the graphic kind of works. Uh, and basically it boots up and it actually does a pretty good job at starting up the application. It, that was pretty quick for a 1.2 ARM and not even a gig of RAM. I'm, I'm very impressed with that. And yeah, it does work. When I move it around, windows do move. Again, this is uh, experimental, S uh, stuff will break. Now, the biggest problem we have with this guy right now is the USB drivers where you could be doing something and then it'll just stop working and it requires a reboot and every time you reboot, it's 14 minutes. Um, here is Notepad++, yet another 32-bit application. And when we start it up, it takes a few seconds. You can see the process is going, it's thinking. The limitations, like I said, it's not the CPU right now, it's actually the, the SD card. And you can see it's peaked at 100% and that's where our problem is. But again, beginning stages. Notepad++ works, but that's basically about it. If you want to run anything else like Windows related, if I needed to run say, um, I don't know, a control just to create users or something like that. Oh, just remember you gotta escalate the privileges and there we could add user accounts, automatic login, stuff like that. Um, if you wanted to get to, you know, MS config, 
everything needs to be ran as the admin, but yeah, msconfig works. You go to tools, if you want to pull up system information, launch that. And this is the wrong system information. But you can see how quickly it still works, even though it's got a slow SD card. Once it gets booted, it's not bad at all. System properties, that's what I'm looking for. And this is, see, Windows 10 Pro. Uh, the Home Edition, I heard there was a little bit of issues, but I, I'm just using Pro so I could skip that whole thing. I never ran Home, so I don't even know if there was issues or not. You can see a 64-bit operating system, are ARM-based. It, it works. It, it's pretty good. I know what you guys are going to say. Why are we going to throw Windows in when we could just use Linux? This is just, like I said, a proof of concept, another type of operating system. It's pretty cool that Windows does work on this guy where it's not meant to be ran on this guy. Uh, Windows on ARM was generally meant for quadcoms uh, like Snapdragon processors and stuff. And you see the new HP that came out and now using this operating system. Ultimately, it's great. Um, it does work. It's a little finicky with the drivers, but it's not bad. And if you are going to do the setup process like I was describing late, uh, before, links in the description below. It, Remember to set aside at least a good maybe four to six hours. I mean, it takes a long time to get this installed. But once it does, I would make a backup of that image just so if you screw up anything, you could always just reload the image itself, which is much quicker than that four to six hour process. And yeah, you have yourself playing around with this. And I'm really reaching out to you guys who are driver developers or are really good with code as far as like figuring out how we could port more drivers into this, especially the sound. Wi-Fi, networking, the SD card, uh, maybe get a better implementation of it. But that's that's basically all up to you. And I really hope you guys try out this operating system. It's it's really cool, especially you could run, run x86. I, I don't know what else to say about this. One gig of RAM, four core, Raspberry Pi, a $35 computer that now could run Windows 10. So, so I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Again, if you want to know the full install, I'll leave a link in the description to the guy who created the tutorial and everything, and at the end with the end cards and everything. Also, if you want me to test specific things like a program or something to see if it works, not games or not anything video related, but I could try it to see if it works or not, uh, hit me up in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.